I think if we have one central challenge of our generation right now is to make sure the forests themselves uh, can survive. Protecting forests is one of the fastest, cheapest ways for us to fight climate change. These forests are one of the greatest resources that we could possibly hope for in the history of the planet. And I think the world, when faced with the consequences, would love to keep them. My mission is to make sure that we can build a system, come up with plans, come up with uh, techniques, come up with uh, strategies, whereby the entire forest of the world, all these natural ecosystems, can be protected. My name is Topher White. Uh, I'm a National Geographic Explorer and the uh, founder of Rainforest Connection. The Rainforest Connection is this organization that, uh, that I run that's largely about trying to stop illegal logging in the rainforest. Whether you live in a city or on a coastline or on a mountaintop, everywhere you are, climate change will affect you in some way. But it's such a big global problem that a lot of people struggle with ways that they can have an effect. And there's a lot of great ways we can do that when it comes to consuming energy. But most people don't realize that deforestation is the second largest contributor to climate change. Trees, we know, they take carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere. But the thing is, a tree will live, it'll die, it'll decompose. And so you have this huge carbon sink. And when you cut a tree down, especially if you burn it, that stuff gets exposed to the air and it decomposes and all that carbon gets released like a carbon bomb. 50 to 90 percent of all the logging taking place in the rainforest is illegal, which means that it's anywhere from half up until almost all. And that's because illegal logging is incredibly profitable. There's no transparency in a lot of these places. It's easy for large cartels to get away with it. And illegal logging itself is usually going after the most high-priced wood, the really big trees. There's people out there in the forest uh, who would stop this if they could. They just need the support from the rest of the world. The most effective conservation solutions are ultimately very local. All the tools that we need to get this done exist for us now. We don't need to build new hardware. We don't need to come up with all sorts of new laws in these places. We just need to build the right social and economic systems to allow people to protect their own backyard. My background in physics made it pretty easy for me to imagine being able to pick out the sounds automatically of chainsaws from a forest, even as noisy as it was. I'm kind of a hacker and, and you know, I like to build things uh, with, with what's already around. The big question was, what can we use to build a system that's real time, that's high end, that can work in some of these remote places? And the obvious answer is old cell phones, old smartphones. You wouldn't think it, but there's actually cell phone networks on the outskirts of these forests. And those are the places that are most under threat. So the whole idea behind this is that people have old phones they don't want anymore, and they send them to us in the mail. We unpack them and come up with the rest of the stuff and put them in a box and send them off to the field. Phones themselves are being thrown away with hundreds of millions every year in the U.S. alone. Phones that uh, are 10 years old that no one would think of using are still fantastic little computers that can do the most amazing stuff. Phones are way over-engineered. So when these companies make phones, they're made to last for a really long time. So the way our system works is that each phone, we call them guardians that goes up in the trees, it's basically a phone in a box with a nice microphone and some solar panels to both keep it powered and protected. But what it does is it listens to all the sounds of the forest, sends them all in real time up onto some computers and servers that we operate on the internet in the cloud. It's an uh, artificial intelligence algorithm that looks for the, the, the problematic sounds, like chainsaw, logging trucks, motorcycles, gunshots. You can pick up sound from a great distance away. You don't need that many up in the, up in the treetops. You need like maybe 10 can protect like good like 30, 40 square miles of forest if you put them in the right places. You can hear chainsaws like a kilometer away. Let's listen in and see what it sounds like in Peru right now. It's a really noisy place. There's more species there, more biodiversity than we can even begin to count right now. And when it finds something, it'll then send an alert to us, but also to local partners on the ground. So local rangers, local lawyers, the partners that we build up in these areas. If you can show up before many trees have been cut, before the truck is full of logs, if you can show up uh, uh, with a, with a, and catch a truck on the way in, the stakes are so much lower you can actually um, sort of turn people around and, and diffuse things more quickly. Real-time awareness and real-time uh, monitoring of uh, the forest really matters when in the hands of the right people. Some of our projects involve working with students uh, to build the guardians themselves, learn about uh, the science of solar panels, the science of software engineering, the science of how to charge a battery, and then what they build actually goes off into the forest over the next few weeks, gets put into places that are really under threat, 
And we were able to connect the, the local people, the defenders, the, the indigenous people, with the students. So the indigenous people know that students in the United States actually care about what they're doing down there. And suddenly the students have a face to put to the stories that we tell. The truth is that the future of our planet may largely depend upon whether we can keep the forests intact. And those forests don't belong to us, they belong to people there in the forests. So we just try to protect their own backyard. If they can keep that from being cut, they're having an effect that's hundreds of times larger than any individual here. It turns out that they're not necessarily aware of the importance of what they're doing. And if we can make it clear to them that keeping those forests intact is really important to the entire future of the planet, then that makes a big difference. These are the climate heroes. 